this. From here, we're going to go to five, and those five places will make up the podium. So our first boat to face the starter will be Scott Donald, Graham Hill, Kyle Patrick, Nick Berryman, Richard Murray, Richard Burt, Rob Coley, Peter Cowie, Sam Newdick and Glenn Head. Scott Donald now in the start chute. All right. So... Scott Donald came here with a 68.4. He's going to have to go a lot better than that. The last time out, he had a nightmare of a run. He really did. Bogged it down, went the wrong way. Lucky to get in to this uh, top 10 by the hair of his chinny chin chin. The reason that we are running a top 10 is because we have two boats in this top running order that are only running on a day licence. Shows the underneath of the Sprint Tech hull. Gee, I'll tell you what, we've seen a lot of, uh, we had a good look at a lot of uh, underneath the hulls. Scott Donald for mine, just not going full pace at the moment. Now putting his foot, well, yeah, now the foot goes into it a little bit, into the comfortable part of the track. The split a 40, 40.768. Yeah, so... He's just needing to get this uh, boat home. Of course, we know that anything it can happen. And he gets over with a time of 56.132. So there we go, kicking things off for our super boats. A 56.132, the time to beat. Well, actually, he went 12 seconds quicker than he did coming into this top 10. So he was very lucky to get into this, uh, into this top 10. As we now check out Liquid Gold, Graham Hill and Amanda Kiddo. As we've said, Graham Hill does not see the lights of the Wanganui Shelter View track very well at all. And he's had a couple of scary moments out there in the last two runs under lights. Where is he going to go from here? He came into this uh, top 10 with a 59.6. He has gone quicker, but it is under lights. Nissan Twin Turbo. Yeah, certainly don't be fooled about how quiet this machine is because it really can get honk. Oh, oh he's gone wow. up hill, off and uh, on the exit of that right around the outside of all the signage up there. So, Graham Hill, that is the end of him. Yeah, Graham Hill, uh, just as he came up that back chute there, just uh, seemed to get himself discombobulated. Um, that, that word is in the thesaurus, I'm sure about it. Discombobulation, uh, confusion, all sorts of issues going up into that part of the track. And, uh, well, you saw the outcome. He clipped the inside of the island and then uh, oversteered it out to the outside around all of the signage at the top part of the track there. So, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is Graham Hill and Amanda Kitto. <laughs> no, he's definitely not a night rider. There is no doubt about that. All right, so, uh, Jace. KV. I'll tell you what, mate, last time you showed up into the commentary tower, yes. you were wearing a pair of punty shoes. Was I? You were. Last time we were in this commentating tower working together, you were wearing some weird, weird shoes. It's good to see you've manned up and got a pair of jandals on. Red band jandals as well, mate. Red band, are yeah, they? Yeah, no, uh, little rippers. Are they non-slip surface at, stuff? Look at your thing. Have a look at my feet. I'll tell you what, I could actually do uh, radio, uh, not, well, I could do radio with those feet. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, Julia Murray's gumboots look better than my feet, actually, don't they? They sure do. They're yeah. out. They look like hobbit feet, really. That's not very nice. I was picking on your dress sense, not your body. <laughs> no, you should see his toes. You know that second toe next to the big one? That is the longest second toe I've ever seen, mate. That is more like a claw. That shows that we really did evolve from the sea, hey? That's sort of like a fin. They're webbed feet, aren't they? You, you just concentrate on your own feet, Frodo. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, mate, I've got a belly big enough. I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing yeah, my feet a lot. beard. Well, I'm it really could be a hobbit. No, no, that uh, Gandalf, that fella, with the staff and, you know, every... You, know, oh, you want to really be the good. white wizard. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I tell you what, that was a bit of uh, commentary genius, that. We would have been better off playing Marcel Marceau to our listening audience there, I think. 
All right, now it is going to be Kyle and Brick Patrick. So that is the end of Graham Hill. But uh, Kyle Patrick, our competitors from the United States of America, his son Brick sitting in alongside him. Kyle Patrick came into this top 10 with a 56.401. Well, he won't want to take it back to the US with a ding, ding in it. No, no, he won't be able to get this around. And I'll tell you what, Leighton Manel will be hoping he gets this boat around without digging it as well, because otherwise Kyle Patrick will certainly be trying to squeeze him on a deal. And we know that Leighton Manel can do a deal. All right, let's see how they get on around this uh, here for the school. He's just buttoned off a wee bit before planting foot and again is leaping right out of the water coming past the commentary tower now around this really fast bit of the track just sort of feathering it a wee bit around the top there and yeah. getting a wee bit wide but hanging on to it nicely yeah absolutely look i'm really impressed with the way kyle patrick's come to grips with his twin survey certainly down on the boost at a 41.2 uh, so he is outside the time that scott donald posted on the first split Back through the middle of the course, he comes and he just shoots his way around there. Over the line now, let's see what he posts. It's a 56.765. Yeah, so uh, look, I doubt that we will see Kyle Patrick progress into the next stage. But ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our US competitors, Kyle and the Brick Patrick. Yeah, well done, lads. Uh, first outing. Under lights, well, they haven't raced under lights for quite some time, and of course in a, a new boat as well, so they've yeah, got well, to be really stoked with that. Yeah, mate, Kyle hasn't uh, raced under lights since uh, Jesus was playing 5-8 for Jerusalem. That's quite some time. That was a long, long time ago. All right, so now we go to the very main. Whipple supercharged NZ Riverjet. Get on the team Riverjet, like the page, make some comments, and we are going to give you some uh, shirts and some caps. Oh, Nick Merriman got the boat completely clear of the water. I've really been enjoying watching that race all day. He's certainly been giving it absolutely everything. He's been really, really exciting to watch. He comes back through in the middle of the track now. And let's see how he's going for a split time. He goes through with a 39 for a split. That is a quick split. That is the quickest in this category at the moment. And a 54.091 straight to the top, uh, 2.1 seconds quicker than Scott Donald. So, you've still got Richard Murray, Richard Bird, Rob Golly, Peter Cowie, Sam Munich and Glenn Head to go before we work out our top five in the Superboat category. So, uh, absolutely sensational. It will now be Richard Murray coming out on the track. Come on, Richard. Throw one down for us, mate. So, uh, the... Oh, I love the sound of this. We know who it is. It's the Mina Machine. Richard Murray came into this with a 53-616. Now launching off the line. He knows he needs to go quicker than that. They will have dialed this machine up, giving him plenty more fuel, giving him more power, more speed. Now into this all he calls it. Oh, really, boy? No, got away with it. The big hip and shoulder, the hippie, hippie, shake, shake. Straight into the tyres. He really seems like he's going, going a lot harder than what he has done previously, which is just good to see. He knows that this is the time where he has to get it done. So come on, Richard. Come and put a split now. What's he got? It's a 39-1. So that's uh, the quickest of the split so far. Bring it on home, buddy. Come on, Rich. There he goes, round the final bend and over the line. He's about to come with a time. 
of 54, 447 in the P2. Point three four down on the time that Nick Berryman uh, posted. But the interesting part about that run was when Richard Murray hip and shoulder the tyres on the exit to the hairpin. His wife, Julia Murray, sitting in the commentary tower was like a cat, nearly hit the top of the roof, scared to be living Jesus out of me. Not too sure if I like being in the commentary tower when Richard's on the track. It's a dangerous place to be. You might think it might be dangerous out on track, but next time I'm going to let you know when Richard's on the track so you can all watch Julia Murray. It's bloody frightening. Uh, there's another camera angle, a camera on Julia as well, while her husband's racing. Yeah, that yeah, might hilarious. work very well. So our next boat to face the starter will be the quad rotor turbo oh, of yes. Richard Burt. The impellers on the turbo have been broken on the inlet of the turbo. So some of the impellers inside the turbo. So this boat's certainly not performing at its optimum because of that issue. Not something that they can sort out at the moment. Richard Burt came into this with a 52 625. The quad rotor turbo, he's taken the taxi lights off it. Oh, he must he have didn't just... want it weighing him down. This boat would weigh as much as two skinny blokes and a light spot. Had the boat just sitting really, really nicely around that hairpin. He's uh, bumping and shaking a wee bit at the moment, but man, this thing is absolutely flying. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely hammering. Knifed it a little bit up at the uh, top of the mouth, fresh uh, nut at the top of the track. Now down towards the split. This will give us a good indication. The split is the best split so far with a 37.2. He is on the money for a really, really good time. Let's see how he just buttons off a wee bit through that final bit. Is that going to cost him dearly? We're going to find out what is it. It's a 51, 1, 2, 8. <laughs> Richard Bitt. Really good run there from Richard Bird. He will be very happy with that. He has gone about 1.5 seconds quicker than he did in his previous run. So that is a great time. The, his best split was a 37, and that is the quickest split as well. So even with those uh, impellers on the inlet to those turbos that are damaged, uh, that boat still running absolutely red hot. As we now go to Rob Coley, this is the mouth fresh super boats. This is the mouth fresh 705 cubic inch big block Donovan. Oh, the excitement, the entertainment machines just keep on coming. God, it's not stop. They? Wow. Super boats. Oh, really nice around there. Big wall of water came off the bow, but I th and I thought that he dug it in too hard, but it, the transition was sensational. Oh, eased it off into the hairpin. Overcooked it. Overcooked it massively. If that was a chicken, it would have been charcoal chicken. So Rob, after that little mishap there at the hairpin, has got a bit of time to make up, but he's still got plenty of race track to go. So he can definitely pick up some tips now. What's he doing there with a 38 for his split? He does need to pick up a bit more time in this final part of the race. Smash it on through the middle there. Bring it around in this uh, poison ivy machine. Over he goes. Rob Coley, P2 with a 52.766 at the moment. Nice. Uh, behind Richard Burt by 1.6 seconds. Well down on the split as well because he got it bogged down coming around the hairpin. Eased it off through the boat in there. You saw what happened. It really got stuck in that big hole. But with 705 cubic inches of power, got himself out of the hole that he dug pretty quickly. So uh, with a few boats left to run in, uh, in this, will this be enough to put Rob Coley and allow him to continue on through? We've got Peter Curry, Sam Newdick and Glenn Head still to run. Rob Coley actually will make it through. Uh, it's guys like Scott Donald, Richard Murray, Nick Berryman that are sitting on the bubble at the moment. We can guarantee you that that is the end of Kyle Patrick and obviously Graham Hill. So that is the end of our friends from the US as we now go NZ Racing with Peter Coey and Louise Blythe. <laughs>
launching out of the blocks is this multi-world champion and New Zealand champion as well, Peter Cowie. As always, the consummate professional and just keeps getting better and better generally as the night wears on. Look at him around that hairpin. He'll be happy enough with that for now as he swings the boat around, coming past the commentary tower. Foot flat as he's absolutely hammering it around the top of the mouth fresh sweeper. Yeah, Peter Cowie really got a good head of steam going at the moment. Really carrying it on, being very, very smooth, pretty consistent at the moment as well. Where was he at in the split? 36, 173. Uh, that is quick, very quick. The quickest we've seen. Righto, Peter, let's bring it on home now. He has had a great lap so far and finishing strong. 50. 50. 147. Up to the top of the table, one second quicker than Richard Burt. So, Peter Cowie split the 36-1-6 was red hot. So, there now, we go. We know they need to get around at 36 or lower, really, to try and you know, maybe get under that 50-second mark. Yeah, that's right. The, uh, we want to see those splits into the high 35s to uh, get into a sub 50 seconds. Now the next man to face the starter, Sam Newdick, is the fastest man on the track during the day. He has not beaten the time that Glenn Head in the Altherm boat posted at night, but he's the quickest man so far. So, Sam Newdick now, Glenn Mason, their last run was a 5886. Oh, really just squeezing the power on. Didn't seem to have full power going up the straight till he got to the right end and then squeezed it right on. Sam Munich has nailed this hairpin each and every time and again that time as well. Unbelievably smooth so far is uh, Sam Munich. Really just got some fantastic lines going there. Got that boat set up really, really well. So he is looking very, very promising as well. Can he get a sub 50? What do you reckon, KB? Well, this uh, split will tell the tale. 36-5 down on the time that Peter Coey posted. So, Sam Newdick uh, is going to have to get a hurry on here. Now into this final push for the line. And it is a big 49-9-7-3. So, sub-50 for Sam Newdick. That is a really good run. He was 0.4 seconds slower than Peter Cowie at the split and then gets back and uh, beats Peter Cowie by 0.2 of a second. So he picked up 0.5 or thereabouts of a second in one third of a lap. And that was purely and simply because he was smooth. All right, Eltherm, Glenhead, Olivia Van Dersen. So what can the HRE Twin Servo produce now? Had a real sort of up and down day so far with the uh, mechanical issues with the boat, but uh, they've got it back up and uh, working nicely. And Glenn posting a really, really fast time. Last oh. time out under lights, and that was amazing through the hairpin. Sensational. Yeah, now. Going up through the sweeper, the mouth breast sweeper. Glenn Head and Olivia Van Dersen around to the left now to the far side of the track. This will give us an idea of where they're at. The split is a 35.67. So 0.9 up on the time that uh, Sam Munich did. Glenn Head now in the push for the line. Here we go. Oh! oh. 48775, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Electric. Wow, that was quick. Very, very quick. So, ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Head is certainly here to play. All right, so this will give us the top five into the super boats, and it is going to be Rob Coley. Made it in by the hair of his chinny chin chin. Richard Burt, Peter Curry, Sam Newdick, and that man, Glenn Head. We're going to have a top five shootout for both the Group A and the Super Boats. But first, we are going to go top three of the Group B.
Well, I better not throw that piece of paper away because that is the time.